Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make drum code style techno. As usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description for just $5. And yeah, let's dive in. So the first thing I have going on here, we're at 130 BPM. This is what you heard in the intro. is this reverb kick, which sounds like this. And so the way I made this is two layers. The first layer is obviously the reverb layer. And so the way I made this was I started with this kick. Just like a pretty short, nice kind of kick with a good transient. And I put it into this reverb with the dry wet, completely wet, and a pretty good amount of decay time. After that, I turned on this amp, which accomplishes two things. For one, it distorted it a little bit, um, which is what you kind of need. And two, it convert you can convert it to mono with this because it has the output thing. Um, so I set it to mono, and then after that, I put it into this auto filter, which is just doing a nice low pass. And what that does is it filters out. Obviously, when we listen to this, you can hear that like rumbling low end. All this is doing is just getting rid of the high end and giving you just the low end. So I did that, um, and then for the sort of like main punchy layer, I have this. Which is just a nice kind of punchy kick that, you know, works for this. Um, it's mostly about sort of blending these together nicely. So then, after that, I just have a saturator on the overall group. Um, we have a bit of drive, and then I have this analog clip. I turn the bass up a little bit, so it is affecting it. Um, and I'll show you here is with it, and then without... So you can hear it's mostly, like, the analog clip is mostly happening on the reverb layer. But that's cool, and then the drive is helping to sort of tie the whole thing together, as well as give it a little bit of interesting texture. So the next thing I have here are some hi-hats. Um, the first one is this one, which sounds like this. And so all this is, is it's like an old drum machine hi-hat sample I had. Um, and then I just put that into this erosion. Which you can hear just sort of makes it a little bit darker, a little bit more gritty, and yeah. Um, so this is a good thing I'll talk about real quick. Is like these kind of hi hats are really good for this style, and especially with the next one as well, because they're kind of like gritty and a little bit more like hard hitting. Like it isn't just a boring, clean white noise hi hat. It's got a little bit of character to it, and that's the main thing I'll say about drum codes techno that I think really connects with people as well as like something that. Is just very characteristic of it in general is like these sort of more raw sounds where it's not like the super hard hitting like industrial like dark techno but it's still dark and it still has that kind of like raw atmosphere um so yeah so that is that hi-hat and then the next hi-hat is actually two layers it sounds like this so the first one is this operator layer and what I did with this is just some white noise. I shaped it like this with the envelope, and then I have that going into a bandpass filter, which is set this way with some resonance and some frequency here. And this is just sort of a nice backbone layer to this, which is the shaker. It's just playing 16th notes again, and I have this going to an EQ8, and then this erosion, so you can hear here without those. And the EQ8 just makes it a little bit more lo-fi, and then the erosion. Adds a bit of that kind of like bit crushed grit over top of it. It's just to sort of add like take this away from just being a super clean like simple shaker sample and make it more dirty and more just like fitting this atmosphere. Um, and then this thing, like I said, it's sort of like a backbone layer. It just kind of adds like a nice sort of clicky thing in the background to this one. I feel like this shaker isn't complete without this. Um, so yeah, so the next thing I have after that is this pad, which I made in analog. Um, it's just this little G minor chord that plays throughout the whole thing. And all this is, is like I said, it's a G minor chord. I put the third or A sharp up an octave to split it out a bit more. And it just gives the chord some nice depth because we have like a low note and then a pretty high note as well. It's just more spread across the keyboard this way. Um... Sorry about that, shifting around here. Um, but yeah, so the way I made this sound was pretty straightforward. I basically just used a square wave and analog. Um, you know, I just want to use a square wave because, like, I tend to use saw waves a lot for pads, so I figured I'd mix it up a bit today. Um, and then after that, I have it going into this low-pass filter. I have it on the low-pass 12 setting, which just lets through a little bit more high harmonics because, essentially, the difference between them is the amount of 
high end. They are attenuating per octave. That's why you see L low pass 12 dB per octave and then 24 dB per octave. So that means the 12 dB per octave one is filtering 12 decibels of high end per octave and then the 24 dB one is filtering 24 decibels of high end per octave. So they just sort of give you a little bit of a different response. And in this case, I used the 12 to just let a little bit of that high end through. I also used some resonance on this. You can hear the resonance gives it kind of a nice like warmness. And it makes it a little bit more juicy as well. Um, and then I have this going to the amplitude envelope, which is just set like this. Um, after that, I have a bit of vibrato. It just gives it some nice pitch drift. I'll turn this up a little bit. And just gives it, you know, we're always going for more like interesting texture and more of like a cool vibe. And the vibrato, I feel like, helps to add that. Um, so after that, I have this erosion. I'll turn off these effects and you can kind of hear it it's pretty subtle but it's just there for a little bit of like atmosphere and again we're just trying to give these sounds a little bit more grit so yeah pretty straightforward this is the pad just coming out of analog so we have that adding that nice little bit crushing on top um, and then that's going to this chorus which is pretty subtle i just have it set like this i believe this is actually the default setting um, I just kind of put it on there and it sounded good, so I figured why not. But yeah, that's just adding some stereo width and some space overall. Um, after that, we have this echo, which really helps to add the space and a little bit of width. Not much because the echoes are synced or are on the same like clock here. But you can hear it just kind of gives it that like atmosphere. Like it, it sort of washes it out a little bit. And I had the dry wet up pretty high, so that helps as well. Um, but after that, I have this auto pan, which is set up to do a sort of fake side chaining. So this, I didn't think that this really worked just playing throughout. <laughs> with no kind of side chain. So I added this auto pan because we couldn't really side chain anything to this kick. Since it's got so much reverb. Um, I guess I could have side chained it to like the top layer, but I wasn't really trying to do that. So I just added this auto pan here. And what the auto pan is doing is essentially we're just using it to make this fake side chain. So I have the phase all the way down to zero, so it's not affecting the stereo width. It's just affecting the mono volume. Um, and then I have a set to quarter notes. The amount is up all the way. And then I have it on this sort of saw wave mode. And then I've inverted it. So if you click this switch that says normal, it'll invert it. And as you can see, it's backwards. And now we have like a side chaining kind of effect. So this is just a cool way to do that. Um, you can shape it a little bit with this shape. But yeah, and then after that I just have this EQ8 doing a bit of like a high pass. Um, so the next thing we have here is this chord stab, which sounds like this. And yeah, it just plays every four bars. I have the same G chord that the pad is playing, just the regular one with the third and octave up. You can hear it kind of makes a difference. I feel like it makes it more like epic and kind of like chaotic sounding. Um, but yeah, so the way I made this is basically it's just some white noise. Uh, the envelope is set like this. And I have that going into this bandpass filter. And what I did on the bandpass filter is two things. One, I turned the resonance up all the way. So we're just getting a nice tone. You can hear when I turn it down. That's what gives it like the tonality. So yeah, so I have that and then what I did was, if you right click on this frequency here, you can get play by key. And what will happen is it will essentially tune it to whatever notes. So what this is doing is it's doing this thing called key tracking. If you see down here, this frequency to key thing is at 100%. And what key tracking is, is basically it says, wherever you play on the keyboard, the filter will sort of change its position very subtly based on that. So essentially what this means is if you can tune this, which Ableton will automatically do that if you do the right click and hit play by key thing, um, you can have a tuned filter and thus if we make the tone with this resonance, we can make a yeah, we can make a note using the filter with some white noise. So that was what I did there. And I'm just playing the chord. Um so after that I have a bit of echo. Um just adding a bit of space here. 
And then I have some reverb with a pretty high dry wet and a pretty long decay time. Since this is just a like a short chord stab and it rings out for a long time, I figured I could kind of go crazy with the reverb. There isn't a lot of reverb in the rest of this mix. So yeah, so I did that. And then after that, I have an OTT. Um, so if you don't know, OTT is a famous preset for Ableton's multiband dynamics. It literally stands for over the top, and this is quite over the top. I played around with these settings a little bit just to really dial it in. But you can hear this is doing a lot. It really brings up that reverb and brings up like a lot of, what it's doing really, like why it changes the sound so much, is it's just taking every single frequency that isn't as loud as like the main ones, which you hear when I turn it off. Those are like the main sort of frequencies that are coming through. It's taking everything that's in there that you were hearing before, but just way quieter so you weren't noticing it, and just br dragging it way up. And yeah, so that was what I did there. Um, and then I have another little fake sort of sidechain here. And then I have this going through an EQ8, cutting out the low end. Um, so yeah, so that was really it for this one. Um, like I said, main things to think about are like the reverb kicks and then like sort of working with the percussion and trying to get the timbre right on that. And then the interesting synth work with the white noise and the bandpass filter and the pad. Um, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and sample from this video in the description. So make sure to check that out. And while you're at it, my social media is in the description as well. So go give me a follow. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.